Alright, in this tutorial we're going to look at InDesign and how to set up tabs and how to use tabs the best way. I'm going to get right into it and we're going to start with this information that has no tabs, no nothing on it, and then these ones obviously are, are obviously already tabbed and using the tab system, but I'm going to show you the best way to do it and the way that some people do that is not the best way to do it. So starting here, the first thing I want to do is set up my document a little bit. I've already had this information here, but I want to show that, to clean it up a little bit, I want to get rid of my edges, my frame edges. So I'm going to go to View, Extras, Hide Frame Edges. Now the only thing that I see when I hover over, I get the frame edge there. When if I click on it, it stays and I get my bounding box and I can see the text frame edge. I love getting rid of those. It's not a default thing, so I like to do that. The next thing I need to do is go to Type and Show Hidden Characters. I'm going to be able to see all these hidden characters, whether you know about them or not. It's a great way to look at your design, a great way to control your type, which I'm. this is how I design all the time. So I'm going to see my paragraph, my uh, hard returns, my pilcros. I'm going to see my tab. This is what a tab looks like. And I'm going to see these little dots here, which actually indicate a space. So these are little glyphs that indicate hidden characters that you don't normally see. But like I said, as a designer, you should probably have them on so you can really control your type. Best way to do that. So what I want to do now, I just want to tab these things out. Tabbing is a great way to organize your type with inside one text frame. You not you don't have a bunch of separate text frames. That's a horrible way to do it. You have great control inside of a text frame. You control the type so the viewer can see it well, and then you have good control over it. You can go back and edit it, fix it really, really quickly. It's the best way to do it. The number one thing I need to do is go to type. And now the, the tab panel is a panel, but it doesn't show up under window, under tabs, or type in tables or anything like that. It shows up under type. You click on tabs, and there I am. I'm going to go through everything here today with you, uh, every little thing that you can do with tabs on this tab panel. So let's get right into it. So the most important thing you need to understand is how to, how to set up these tabs. And the very first thing you need to do, just select your type. The tabs, you can press them all day long and select tabs and put them in there. They will not work properly unless you select the type you want the tab to be applied to. So I'm just going to select all my type, Command A. Uh, I'm using a Mac. So Command A and I've selected that all. Okay. So now what I can do, I can set up my tabs. And then I need to do is actually add my tabs in. The tab using the tab button on my keyboard. So set up your tabs first, then add the tabs after. So right now I have these four different types of way to align my type. I'm going to get into that in just a second. My first one I'm going to choose, I'm just going to keep it, the first one is my left align. So I have my different types of tabbing, my X position to specify certain areas I want my tabs to be. I have a leader, I'm going to show you later how to put little dots in, in between each tab. I have uh, my drop down, the clear all, delete tab, repeat tab, reset indents. I have my left align, my first line indent, and my left indent and I have my right indent and look at this one here. I have a little magnet. Now what the magnet does, it will actually select, I could select the text frame and click on the magnet and it'll actually click to the top of that text frame making it easier for me to line up my tabs. Now if you're too close to something or you've selected this and you can't see the top of the text frame, clicking on that magnet is not going to do anything. You need to be able to see the top of your text frame well and have enough space that the frame the panel, sorry, tab panel will align, uh, magnetize itself to the top of your text frame that you're working on. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna select all the type. And for this, I need all the types selected. In some cases, if you just want one line and you wanna set up tabs just for that one line, you can. But for here, I wanna set up all the type. So I'm gonna click on my left justified, there's center justified, right justified, and decimal justified, which I'm gonna show you that. Left justified, I'm just gonna click a tab at each increment of one inch because I'm setting up in inches and set it up at the two inch mark. See where I have to click? I have to click right on this white line above the ruler. It's very small. I don't love the setup of this, but it is what it is. And I'm going to set up another one at the three inch mark, four inch mark, five inch mark, and six inch mark. I need to set up five. One, two, three, four, five tabs. But now look at this. This one is not necessarily, well, that one is actually right on three inches. This one's right on two inches, but this one's a little off, four inches. So I can go to my X position, click on four. Now it's exactly at four. Click on my five. So I can click these individual tabs and make sure they're aligned perfectly to a specific number. Or if I move them around accidentally, there's somewhere else, that's not a problem. I can move them anytime I want. Once you set them up, you can change them anytime. Now here's another thing. I can go to my drop down, I can clear all the tabs, get rid of them all, which I didn't want to do, but I can do that. I can delete a tab. So if I click on this one and say, you know what, I don't want that tab there, I could delete the tab. Or 
I can click on the tab and just click and drag it off and it's gone. Okay, so you can do a few different ways to get rid of a tab. Repeat tab, I'm gonna show you in a second and reset and then I'll show you in a little bit. So now that all my tabs are set up with my type selected, I can actually start tabbing things out. So here I'm gonna press tab and look, it tabs right to my first tab. Second tab, I'm gonna select the actual little dot, that space, I don't need it. Now if I accidentally click on and, and don't get rid of it, that's fine. In some cases it will interfere with the way you wanna play with things, but normally you can keep it, it's fine. The tab still recognizes the space where it wants to go, so you can actually still get rid of it or keep it, doesn't matter. Six ounce glass, I'm gonna keep, half a liter, and then bottle, there we go. So look, each one when I press tab, set up and aligned itself, but this, in this case, it left aligned to the tab, okay? Now, what I could also do is continue on, and they're all set up, so I can just press tab, and tab, and tab, and tab, and tab them all. I'm not gonna do every single one, but you understand now how this works. Let me do one more. So once again, white Zinfandel, tab, and tab. Now for wine menus, this works great. For many other ways to use this too, like table of contents inside a book, or however you're trying to organize information for people to see, this is a great way to do it. So now I have that all laid out and I'm happy with the way it looks, my tabs are great, but I still wanna fix up my tabs. As you can see down here on this one, these tabs are the best way to do it. So I have this tab, I'm gonna select it all. I have my tab left aligned here, but look at this one. This one is right aligned. I use this alignment to align my numbers. I like my numbers to be aligned to the right. They're easier to read from right and they push out to the left. But I'm gonna show you a few different ways where you play around with that. Right here, I have everything set up. Now watch is if I change this one, and look, I click on the tab, and let me actually magnetize it so it's a little bit easier. I click on this tab, and I'm gonna change the tab to any one I want. Look, I left justify it, and now it's left justified. If I add some more numbers, it pushes to the right. If I click on all of it again, I have that tab selected again, and I center it, look, it's centered now. And if I add numbers this way or this way, it doesn't matter. It centers the type. Now I'm going to click on that again. Now it's obviously already, I'm going to right justify that. And now everything will push to the, sorry, will push to the left. Okay. And select it all again. Select that one. And I could decimal. Now what I'm going to do it with this one. I'm going to decimal align because it only will work with number uh, columns that have decimals in it. So I click on decimal. And now what it's doing, it's aligning. Now it's a little too close what happened there, right? So here's another thing you can do with the tabs. You can move them around anytime you want, anywhere you want. So now that it's tab justified, I'm going to be able to add numbers. And look what happens. Even though I add numbers to the right or left-hand side of that decimal, the decimal always stays in line. There will be definitely some use for that if you're doing scientific uh, design and, and putting different mathematical numbers in there with many decimals or on either side of the decimal so this would definitely work out but in this case i really don't need that i'm just going to write a line so i like to make sure that all those are set up that way and once again i can click on all of it and i can move these around now in this case i'm going to select this one again i'm going to magnetize it to the top i want my last tab to be all the way to this black arrow here which is the uh, right indent so i'm going to click on that and I'm gonna change it to the right alignment, a right justify. I'm gonna move it all the way and watch what happens when I go too far. It just pushes it. I can still see my line moving on the page and my arrow on my tab panel. And if I move it all the way here, it aligns right on top of that right indent arrow and look at that, perfect. Now what I could do, I'm gonna realign with my magnetizing it properly so I can see where my tabs are going. And I can just move my tabs over where I feel they should go properly. I can use my X position, or I could just visually put things together there and say, this is the way I want it to look. Maybe make my um, prices a little tighter to the right, my vintage more in the middle. Maybe I can move this one over too. It doesn't matter, however you want to do that. And all of your tabs will align perfectly. So that's how those work. So I have all my um, justification methods and my decimal alignment explain my x position my leader i'll show in just a second and i have most of these explained too which is great so what i also want to show you now is why this one works better over this one 
So this one is good, this one is not. See what happens, there's plenty of tabs, there's extra tabs set up here, and we don't want that. We don't want all these uh, tabs in because it's harder to move them around. If I set these up, and to move these around now, I have to individually delete or add tabs to move them around. In this case, where my tabs are set up properly, I could move it around and move with the tab. Here, I can't because number one, there's no tab set up. I just press tab, 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 or repeat tab. And let me show you what I mean by repeat tab. So I'm just gonna select these four. I'm gonna copy them and just make a new little box here, just on the side here, let's do it here. Okay, there are my tabs, or there's my text frame. And now what happens, instead of actually setting up tabs, which I'm just gonna clear all the tabs, the current tabs I have, I'm gonna clear them all. I'm just going to press one tab, click on one tab, move it over, and I'm going to say repeat the tab. And watch what happens. It repeats the tab in equidistant from the last tab. And just keeps going all the way down to the text frame. And now what I can do, obviously, I can tab, and I can tab, and I can tab, and keep going, and keep going, and keep going, and I just tab, tab, tab. Not the best way to do it. You don't have as much control this way. This is the best way to do it. So that repeat, repeat tab function, it might come in handy in some situations, but to have that ultimate control, set up your own tabs, how you want them positioned, even this might work, because then you might say, oh, I don't need that tab, and you're kind of, you're making it equal just by getting rid of like every other tab or however you wanted to do it. But make sure, once again, see what happened there? I started getting rid of the tabs, but I didn't have my type selected. You always have to have your type selected if you want to play around with the tabs. So now the ones that are in blue do not apply to all the type. The ones that are in black apply to all the type. So I could just obviously get rid of the blue ones. Well, the ones that are, were blue uh, that did not apply anymore, okay? So that's another thing that happens too is that when I, if I go back to my original setup here, I have to select everything. If I don't select everything, I just select this line and I put in an extra tab. If I select everything again, that one is gonna show up blue because it only applies to certain types of that tab, certain types of that information, not all of it. So I would just probably get rid of it and make sure that all the type is set up properly together with the tabs affecting all the type. Now, another way to do it, like I said, was down here and just all the tabs are set up without any actual setup tabs. So I have all this information again. And instead of having any tabs, I'm just going to clear all and I'm just going to tab. And I'm going to try to set it up this way. No tabs are set up. Once again, no tabs are set up. I'm just pressing tab and aligning them. This is a very bad way to do it because you do not have control over what you want to do with your tabs. Because later going on, it's like, oh, you know what, I want to align these back again. You got to delete them, you got to add more tabs to push it. Not the best way to do it. This is the best way to do it, setting up your tabs properly. Okay, gone through that as well. So if I want to, uh, once again, I cleared all my tabs, I could delete tabs, I could repeat tabs. And now we're going to talk about that, resetting that indent there as well. So here I have some type. I just put in some lorem ipsum. I'm just playing around with this a little bit. I just want to talk about these two and this one here as well. I'm just going to press my magnet and it magnetizes to the top. So a bunch of type. Here's a paragraph. And I have my hard returns showing that these are separate paragraphs. Now what I can do is I can play around with my uh, little arrows here, which once again are hard to, to select sometimes. But that's okay because I also can control it here as well. Watch what happens when I move my top arrow and I move over my indent. This moved as well. And what is this? It's our first line left indent. So only that left line, that first line of each paragraph will move over. And I can move it over, use my X position, use however I want to do that. Okay, that's my indents. Now, if I want to move all the type over, I can use this one here, and I can bring it, move it up. Now, watch what happens, though. The top one can move independently on its own. The bottom one cannot. It has to move, they move together. So if I move that over here, now everything moves over, and the left line indent is still, the first one, is still further, which the beginning of each paragraph is moved over. And remember, all the type was selected. If I bring it back, even just a little bit, it moves back with it. 
If I bring it back even further, it moves with it. It can actually go past that first, the left indent and bring it back further like this. However you want to set that up. So there's a few different ways. Now, once again, to bring these back together, oh, that one, that's right, that doesn't move independently. I gotta bring this up here. And then if you don't like the way that works, you can just go to reset indents and it'll bring everything back. So there is a good understanding of moving it here and say, I wanna move this up. Well, that moves the first arrow. If I wanna move up the second arrow, which is the left indent, I can just move that up. Now the same goes with this right indent. So if I move the right indent, I can move that up that way too and keep it nice and tight, but keep in mind the text frame and how do you have that space around the text frame. And I could still, once again, select all the type and move the right indent over, 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 or bring it back, or once again, just reset the indents and it resets all the indents. Now, another one I just learned about recently, which is kind of interesting, is to add a um, drop cap, which is right here on the paragraph panel. I'm gonna add a drop cap and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger now I could add more if I want to add more uh, letters to the drop cap, but I just want to put the B. And this one was an interesting one. If I select right next to the type that is next to the drop cap, and I go to type, insert special character, other, and type in indent to here, all the type indents with that special character, special hidden character, it will align to that new tab that is set up here. Now nothing shows in the tab panel, but it will indent up to that point, and now you'll have this nice straight line, and I have my drop cap on the other side. Now, if I don't want that, obviously, we can work with it this way, just to show you that it's interesting. Now, another thing I wanna show you is letting, or leaders, sorry. The leaders are when you have those little dots da -da 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 -da, that show up and show you the next one to the next one to the next one. Now, this is interesting because before I do anything, let me, uh, clear everything. Actually, I would love to get rid of all these. And I don't have anything set up here. Before, I could do this a few different ways. I can set up my leaders to be set up before I start any tabs. That way, all my tabs will have leaders on them. So, there's no tab set up. I'm going to click on the leader. I'm going to add the period because that's a normal leader to have. Now, when I start setting up my tabs, I'm going to set one up here and here, and here, and we see my leader is on. My selected the tab, it's selected, it's blue, and the leader is there. Now, when I click on tab, look, the leaders show up. And the leaders are there, the leaders are there, and so on and so on. Now, the leaders don't show up here because there's not that many tabs, but the first one, two, three tabs will show leaders. Tab tab, and so on, okay? So that is what we do with leaders. Initially, so if you have your type and you wanna have leaders on them, you could just click on it. Before you set up any tabs, click on the leader to have your, decimal, your period in there, your decimal, and they will automatically show up. But watch something else, kind of interesting. I can actually now set up my tabs to be, or my leaders to be something a little bit different. I'm just gonna click on this one here. And look, I selected all of it, I didn't. I just select the second line. I select this tab, and I don't want that leader. I want a different leader. And look what happens. Only that tab on only this line changed the leader. Let's do that again. I'm gonna select my third line, and I'm gonna select, select the last tab. This tab, I want to have maybe a forward slash and maybe make a little pattern out of it. Space, there we go. I said, okay, enter. And now look what happened. It developed, it created a little pattern here, only on this line and only on this tab. So if you've already set up your tabs, like I have here, I'm gonna use this one right here. I can actually set up the tab to be different leaders. Sorry, I can set up the leaders to be different per tab, but I want them all selected. I have to select this tab, and look, this tab does not have a leader. I can add a leader. I can click on this one, and I can add a leader. I can click on this tab, and I can add another leader, and I can click on this one, and continue to add a leader. Now, this one's gonna be a little tricky to select. 
but I did get it, and I can bring it back because I went a little too far, and I can add a leader there. So it's pretty interesting because once again, I can click on this one, say, you know what, I don't want that. I want to uh, to put a letter P in for some reason. I can say enter, and now that shows up. That's my leader, which is obviously not a good idea. But just showing you, you have ultimate control over each tab, its leaders, and how it works. I want to show you one more thing. The last thing I want to show you, because we've gone through everything here, is paragraph styles. Now, paragraph styles are uh, very important, but I want to show you how you can set up tabs in paragraph style and how they will overwrite the tabs you have set up without a paragraph style. So if I set up and I say, oh, I like this, I love the style, and this style right here, I want to make it a new paragraph, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to click on the paragraph style, drop down. If you don't know where it is, go to window and styles and paragraph styles. And I could just click on the drop down and say, yes, new paragraph style. And I'm just going to call this one tabs. And if I go to my tabs, I can see, yes, they're all set up the exact same way. Now they push a little bit further because I can't see them, but that's okay. They are there. So, okay. Now that is my new tabs. Now, if I click on this and say, yes, I want this to be tabs as well. Well, now it's set up properly, but the tabs might be set up properly, but there's too many tabs here. So I would have to get rid of a lot of those tabs to make this work properly. Either way, we can set up the tabs that way and the paragraph style how it would be. However, if I set up a new style, and I'll call this more tabs, and I go to tabs and I set up some tabs. I'm put one here, and I put one there, and I put one there, and on this one I'm gonna have, uh, let me, I have to do five, I at least have to do five. And on this one, I'm going to have a leader. And on this one, I'm going to have a leader. Let's just pretend. And I'll say, OK. And once again, I can repeat it. I can clear all, start over, different alignments on the paragraph style setup. I'll say, OK. And now if I set this up and click on this and click on more tabs, now once again, it throws it off because of the way that, do I have that? Yeah, okay, the black, there we go. And now it did set it up the way I set it up on the paragraph style, which is not great. I'm gonna clear all my overrides. Sorry, select it all, clear all my overrides. That plus sign shows me I have to clear the overrides. And now it's set up the way that that tab was set up. So these tabs on the paragraph style overwrite the tabs that I've set up originally without a paragraph style. So that's another interesting thing to keep in mind, but, the main point was to show you all the way you could play with tabs, the way we could play with indents, and also the way that we actually set up and can use our paragraph panel to help us control some of those indents uh, while playing with the tabs as well. I hope that helped.